I've been keeping some employee data in an Excel spreadsheet for a while now, and I want to move it into Access so I can start organizing the data better. I also want to start using other Access features, such as Forms and Reports. There aren't any commands in Excel to export data to Access, so I need to use the Import features of Access to get the data into an Access table. Before I open the Access program, though, I need to make some changes to my Excel worksheet to make the import operation go smoothly. First of all, I notice that this worksheet groups the employees by team. To use access to its best advantage, I want to import all the employees into a single table, so I'm going to consolidate this list before importing it. Just to be safe, I'll make a backup copy of this worksheet. I'll right-click the Worksheet tab, click Move or Copy, click Move to End, create a copy, and then click OK. Then I'll double-click the new tab and rename it Employees Backup. Now I can go back to the original Employees Worksheet. The main problem with this worksheet is that the team information is not contained on each employee's row. It's just a title at the top of each group. To make sure we don't lose the team information for each employee, I need to insert a new column into the worksheet that contains each employee's team number. And I only need to put the heading on the top row because I won't be using this second row of headings at all. Now I'll put the team number on each row so each employee is assigned to the correct team. These employees are in Team 1, and I'll just use the Fill Down feature to fill the cells. And these employees are all on Team 2. Fill the 2. Now I'll get rid of these extra rows in the middle of the data. Now I think I've got it to where I can copy the data to Access. I'll start Access and create a new database called Employee Data. I'll delete the default table by closing it without saving it. There are a couple of ways to import the Excel data. I could use the External Data Wizard to specify how the data gets imported, this gives me more choices about how to import the data and lets me save the operation for later if I need to do the same exact import on a regular basis. However, I'm just basically copying this data into a new table and I'm only going to do it this once, so I'm going to cancel the wizard and use a faster copy and paste method that Access provides. In Excel, I'll copy the data that I formatted, including the column headings. And I'll switch back to Access. Now here's the trick that makes this operation so simple. I right-click anywhere in the Navigation pane, and then click Paste on the shortcut menu. Access asks me if the data includes column headings, which it does, so I click Yes. Access tells me the import was successful. In the Navigation pane, you can see Access used the worksheet name as the table name. I'll double-click my new table to open it. Each column in the spreadsheet is now a field in the Access table. That's a little terminology difference, but many people still refer to them as columns, especially when looking at a datasheet as we are here. Everything looks like it came in pretty well, but I'm missing this one room number. I remember from my original spreadsheet that it was 166A. It turns out that Access is a little more strict about what types of data can go into each column. Every field has to be assigned a data type, such as text or number, and once you choose the data type, only that type of data can be entered into the field. Based on the first eight rows of data that I imported into the table, Access guessed that this field should be the number data type. Then when it encountered 166A in a later row, it just rejected it. The computer model column, which contains both numeric and text values, was correctly interpreted as text because there was a text value within the first eight rows. You might have noticed that Access created an extra table in the navigation pane. That's an error table that describes what happened. If I open it, I can see that there was a type conversion failure on the room number field in row 17 of the original data. Now that I'm aware of this error, I can close and delete this table. If I click the Fields tab, I can see which field type has been assigned to the currently selected field. Here I can change the data type to Text, and now I can enter 166A. 
Another thing I wanted to do was change the carpool field to the yes-no data type so that I can just select a checkbox for each employee instead of typing yes or no each time. I click anywhere in the field, and then on the Fields tab, I select Yes, No from the data type list. In some cases, you can lose data when changing data types, so Access warns you of the possibility. In this case, however, the text Yes and No will convert just fine. If you're doing this on a large table, you should make a backup copy of the table first. One last thing I need to do is add a primary key to this table. The external data wizard always prompts you to do this, but with this faster method, I have to remember to do it myself. Primary keys are very important in databases because they help avoid duplicate records, and they make it easy to create relationships between other tables. To add the primary key, I'll switch to Design View. On the bottom row, I'll type ID as a field name, choose the Auto Number data type, and then I'll click the Primary Key button on the Design tab. Now I'll save the table and then switch back to Datasheet View. And here's the new ID field, which I can drag over to the left, since that's a common placement for ID fields. The table's pretty much ready to use, so I'll save it and close. Just for fun, I'll build a report based on the new table and try to make it look like the original list in Excel. I'll group on the Team field, resize the columns and the headings a little bit, and then I'll delete the ID field. Now I'll click Report View, and I can see that in just a few clicks I've already gotten pretty close to the layout of my original spreadsheet. I click Save, name the report Employees by Team, and then click OK. Now anytime I want to see the employees grouped by team, I can double-click this report in the navigation pane.